that is concerned about these and other proposed cuts? Uh, a couple things. I would add to that the Commission on Science, Innovation, and Technology. There's a proposed significant cut. Uh, EDA has significant cuts. Uh, a couple of things. One, Ben, you alluded to it. We're in the beginning of this process. And so the legislature, legislative leaders, uh, in partnership with the governor, is going to now go through in the budget committees that I'm on and the assemblymen are on, uh, go through this process, right? But I think we also need to look very carefully. This is something I don't think we are particularly good at, at longer term return on investment. Because when you make a cut to something that is a proven job creator, that means you're not just cutting that program, you're cutting any future revenue that that job might create. So some of the examples you just mentioned are good examples. Small business growth, those businesses that grow will then hire more people, they will pay taxes, buy homes, et cetera. We've got to look, I think, long term. You know, we do it in New Jersey one year at a time. And other people have proposed that we should start looking longer term. A lot of proposals are out there. But if we don't take that long term approach, we're going to be having this conversation we're having right now, every single year, and that's just not sustainable. Leader DeMeo, uh, to you, how do we respond to an, the employer community that's concerned about these cuts to do uh, programs that help the employer community? Well, these cuts are coming with, in, in seven budget cycles, this proposed budget is up $22 billion over the last seven years, 62% increase in, in uh, spending, and around 50% growth in revenue. I mean, it just doesn't make sense to not invest in these types of programs that are going to pay back in the future. There are certainly plenty of places in the budget that if you really get down to it and look at it, that are obsolete or really not needed anymore that we should look at. And I'm not going to eliminate that specifically now, but I'll bet you if we really look hard, we can find enough money to cover those important investments going future, going forward uh, for future uh, employees to be better prepared and for help for small businesses as the assembly. <coughs> Senator said, you used to be colleague, Senator said, um, we can find a way to re resituate the budget and make those things work. Mr. Speaker, how about you? I mean, you could obviously be intimately involved in the finals, but as the room gets smaller, you're one of the people who's in it. So how do you respond to the concerns of the employer community who's worried about these proposals? Well, I, I, we, I think we all understand that this is going to be a tighter, tighter tougher year than we have in, in the past several. Um, and so those concerns are legitimate, but I think what, what, we, ought, what we need to do in, in making all of these hard decisions we're going to have to take a look at what the, the true value of a program, any program, is. And that is, uh, as, as Senator Swicker points out, not just in the short term, but in the long term. So as, as we go through that process, uh, we'll have to evaluate what, what the vision is for the future. Uh, and places that are going to provide the kind of forward-looking uh, to be a, a forward-looking resource uh, are ones that will we'll, we'll have a good chance of, of having you know, their funding restored. It's not as simple as to say we can, we can just go find money somewhere else in the budget. You can't just say that. If you're going to say that, you've got to tell me where you're going to save it from because it's, it is a zero-sum game in that regard. Right? If we're going to just cut the budget back, uh, well, then you've got to tell me what you're going to cut out. And I think one of the other things that I've said, Leader DeMeo talked about it, and I think it's one of the, the things that is really not fair we look at it. Yeah, sp spending is, we, we have more spending now than we did when Governor Christie left office. It was 38.3 billion, something like that. When he left, it's 55.9. The biggest difference is that we're paying our bills now. So, you know, we, our, our pension payment will be seven plus billion dollars this year. If there hadn't been skips and, and half payments and partial payments in years gone by, our pension payment would be a billion five. The last pension payment by Governor Christie was somewhere in the nature of three billion dollars. We've also invested more money in that great public education system that we all are so very proud of, each of us is up here. We've invested two billion dollars in property tax relief. So, what we're doing now is investing in the future of the state of New Jersey. What we're doing now is, is paying those bills that, that 
others left for us to, to care about. So, you, you want to cut spending? Sure, skip a pension payment. But that's not a solution. And that's not a place to go to find resources to, to fund other programs. That's just short sighted. So, I think the answer is there's going to be a, a stiff competition. And I will probably meet with scores of you over the next couple of months uh, explaining to me uh, why their program uh, is so important. And, and by the way, I, I, most of them are. I, I don't really think I can think of one where I said, boy, that program is a waste. I've never done that. Uh, so making a critical argument about not just today, but the future, that's, that's the key. And so we're gonna, we are at the very, very early stages of this. And it is, as you point out, the legislature's budget now. Uh, and we have certainly shown a propensity for changing the governor's budget in the past seven years. Uh, so we're going to do, we'll look at that again. Leader Bucco, just want to give you an opportunity if you want to yeah, talk about the budget here. Just very quickly, um, you know, I, unfortunately, I think this, one of the governor's legacies is going to be a legacy of missed opportunities. Um, coming out of COVID, we had um, an abundance of cash that we really could have looked at this budget um, holistically and really tried to figure out what we have to do as a state, what we'd like to do as a state, and what we no longer need to do as a state. We could have used that money to fix some things that uh, we've never been able to fix. And I agree with the speaker, making the pension payment uh, is critical. Funding education.